Congratulations, Kevin. A flawless performance. Thank You've you. got to think that that was the game plan and it played out perfectly. Am I right in assuming that? Yeah, yeah, that was definitely the game plan. You know, uh, make him scared to shoot because the hands were, were a tad bit lower on the backside and then overall just stop the takedowns. And he said that he wasn't going to be shooting takedowns. He's going to show me something a little different. Ha, ha, ha. He lied. <laughs> And I was right. So, so well, look, you said you've been working with a full-time wrestling coach, mm -hmm. and your wrestling defense and those sprawls were excellent. How did it feel in the moment? It felt good. I mean, all the revenge I wanted at 85, but all the glory is going to be at 170. So it felt good. I'm just going to keep going and keep going and keep going. Did anything surprise you? Ah, uh, no, nothing at all. I mean, I knew what Kiesa was going to do. I mean, that was an old dog to show some new tricks with. So I'd be more interested to seeing uh, a new dog with my new tricks. Okay, absolutely. And you had quite a long conversation with him in the octagon afterwards. Yeah. What was being said between the two of you? He was telling me that I should be worried about getting a belt, and I was telling him to shut the F up. You know what I mean? He should be worried about compensating and stay out of the cage. So, yeah. Well, there was a moment where he took his gloves off. Did you see that? Did you think he maybe would retire? And he should retire. I'm going to be real. Like, if, he's, if his goal is to get to a belt and he can't get past me, then he's not getting to a belt. Um, but commentating, he could teach a lot of these guys how to commentate. I think he's one of the better commentators. He's not biased like all these other guys are. And uh, overall, yeah, he's just one of the better commentators. Like, he's probably the, be the best commentator out of all of them. So I would like to see him do that more often. Okay, well, let's, let's go back to, to your performance in there. Yes. It was the knee to the face and then the dust. No, the knee didn't even land. It didn't land? No, the knee didn't land. The knee hit his arm, and I think he doesn't he like, yeah, he doesn't like to be in that type of situation. So he gives up the submission. I mean, props to the guy. He's never been knocked out before because every time he's about to get knocked out, he gives up the submission. So we just kind of knew that's what was going to happen. You know? And were you aware he'd lost by Das? I think it was about two times before. Three. Yeah. Three. Now four. Fourth, yeah. yeah. So that was. Yeah, I felt real good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You said the glory fights are at welterweight. What fights would interest you at 170? What would give you that sort of glory feeling that you're talking about? Uh, literally anybody and everybody. I mean, I think the more wins I get at 170, I can't help but be at the top of the division. Do I want to be? I mean, I'm happy with fighting bums, but wherever they put me is where they put me, and is whoever they give me, I'm going to take out. So I hope they give me somebody special next time. All right, and you think it will be at 170 next time? I don't think I have a choice. <laughs> well, you came in at 169.5, so you were light on the welterweight side anyway. I could probably go lighter if I wanted to. <laughs> Look, and you've spent so much time with fans this week and really enjoying, you know, the, the cheers and the support for you. Even this yeah. morning I saw you were doing photos and, yeah. and fan signings. How big a part of that is it for you? Uh, you know what? Uh, this HB that goes on my neck, it's a uh, Helping Brothers, so we're a nonprofit organization. So uh, I do my nonprofit, and uh, I like being around people as long as people know how to act. If people don't know how to act, I'm a complete ass. <laughs> so as long as they know how to act, I'm one of the greatest people to be around. And I had a blast this morning with the people. And... Uh, the egg spot that we went to, they've been nothing but great to my corner all week, so it was a blast to go there and show back some support. They clearly love you, and obviously Jorge Masvidal's here. He's going mm -hmm. to wrap in the BMF belt around the winner later on tonight, but you and he had a little bit of an altercation in Miami on the streets. Have you crossed paths here in Salt Lake City? I mean, I seen him the other day when he was going to do his thing. I waved at him, he waved back at me. I mean, like I said in Miami, it's just two dogs barking, you know what I mean? <laughs> at the end of the day, he's retired now and he's focused on some other things, and uh, me and him, I don't think we're going to ever fight, so... I'm not worried about that man. I think that man should not worry about me. All know? right. And I want to ask you, obviously in the welterweight division, Leon Edwards, Colby Covington. Yeah. How do you see that fight going down? Um, Colby's hard to deal with, uh, but I think Leon will get it done. Leon proved that he could beat Usman, so he proved that he could beat these wrestlers. So I'm always going to bank on the striker, banging on him. All right. And how quickly do you want to get back in there? Uh, next week if they let me. All right. <laughs> well, we look forward to seeing you. Probably not next week, but whenever that next fight. Well, actually, I wouldn't rule it out. Whenever that next fight comes about. Yeah. Congratulations tonight. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.